God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's a nice, cold, chilly day today in Florida. And my advice for you, if you continue to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, enjoy it. Because today may be the last day of coldness for you. For the wages of sin is death, and all men will die. And we don't even know when death coming. And yet, in a couple days, we're going to have a celebration of the new year, 2018. And you're not even promised if you will finish out 2017. You're not even assured that you will finish this Saturday. Death may hey, come knocking on your door. You're always giving me things. I want to give you something today. Oh, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You're always giving me something. I want to give you something today. Thank you very much. Death is assurance. Death is sure. Death is caused by the wages of sin that we do. We are sinners. We will die. If there's anything you can believe on today, you can believe on death. Now, you may not want death to happen so early, so quick in your life. You want it later on. And yet, we have no idea when death is coming. And we come out here and preach. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel that you may believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Because death is coming. You cannot be saved after you die. You cannot enter into the devil's hell and say, Oh, I'll go back. And I will get saved so they'll come back. When man takes that final breath and steps off into eternity forever, eternal life is forever without time. Eternal life is in heaven by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And hell is for those who have rejected the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the standard for your method and your way to God in heaven. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's amazing when you open up the obituary pages on December 25th and you see all the people that will never celebrate the Christmas holiday again. That those people have entered off into eternity and the Bible says many of them have walked the broad way and have entered into the gates of hell for eternity. And few will go through the straight gate that leads us into life. And what I'm telling you for the fact is that I don't know 
Your obituary may be read tomorrow or the next day or even before 2018. And there are people in hell today that thought, I'll wait till I get older. I'll wait till tomorrow. Oh, we got great celebrations coming up for New Year's Eve. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Oh, the plans. I'm going to set a New Year's resolution. And you're not promised that you will finish 2017. You can be healthy and running and still die. That man that wrote that book about jogging, how healthy it was, died. For God so loved the world that he knew you will die. God told Adam, the day that thou shalt eat that fruit, you will die. And Adam and Mrs. Adam ate that fruit and died. And Genesis chapter 5, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. From that very moment that Abel was killed, men had died. And I don't think Abel woke up that morning and said, oh, my brother's going to kill me. I better settle my estate. And yet, Today, tomorrow, people are going to wake up and they're going to set their plans for the new year. And I'm here to tell you, you may not ever see the new year. You may get that blessing. Just because the new year is coming for people, it may not come for you. And I'm here to tell you... Rather searching for the new year, you need to search for the new birth. For Jesus said, ye must be born again. And you can have your second birth in 2017, still got a couple days. And what that new birth is, is when you come to acknowledgement that you are a sinner. For all have sinned, come to shore the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. Whether there be good, innocent, white sins, or bad, evil, wicked, black sins, all have sinned and come to shore the glory of God. To him that knoweth that doeth good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And when we stand here week after week after week preaching the gospel, telling you how to get saved, what God expects through the Bible for salvation, and you don't do it, that's a sin. And that is the sin that will put you off into a place in hell for rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's no other way to God but by Jesus Christ. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Catholics. There are no Muslims in heaven. There are born-again, Bible-believing Christians, and you need the new birth. You must have the new birth according to Jesus Christ. And that new birth must come before you die. Because you cannot change your eternal destination upon death of no breath and no more blood flowing through your body. And there's even a state that you may not die, but you still may not be able to receive Christ as your Savior. And I'm speaking in a well that I got to admit that I don't know, but in a vegetation state, you may not ever be able to receive Christ. 
there may come a time in your life that your decision to finally receive Christ as your Savior, you may not be able to do it. By death, definitely. You may come to that point, you die, and that's it. Your last chance has come upon you. And we don't know when death is happening. And it's a miserable thing to talk about with the new year coming. And he's over there preaching about death. How miserable and yet. How many people are you going to open up the obituaries on January 1st and see never saw 2018? January 2nd, open up the see the obituaries. How many people... Never saw 2018. January 3rd, 2018, you open up the pages of the obituary, and how many people live to see one day of 2018? We're not guaranteed of assurance of long life. Behold, now is the day of, this is the acceptable time. The Bible says about for you to receive Christ, to be born again, to get the new birth, that you may enter into the gates of heaven through salvation by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Because God so loved the world that he saw the miserable condition that we are in. He's seen the place that we are going for. He is the one that created hell for Satan and his angels. And yet, man in his disobedience to the Word of God drives himself into a place that was for Satan and his angels. And by the means I say you drive yourself is because you are hearing today that Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. And you've got 5,000 million other ways besides Jesus. And one of them ways other than Jesus is, I wish he'd shut up. I wish he'd go away. I wish he'd stop bringing this thing every Saturday. And that is a form of rejection of God's word. That you may believe on the salvation wrought by God through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And people want the love of God. People want the peace of God. They want the joy of God. And that's only going to come by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Now the Bible says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures. There's no collection plate here. We are not taking their money, but we are proclaiming that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures that you may have eternal life. And as you would with any dead person, you would bury them. It's proper. And yet Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God, after three days and three nights of rose from that grave, according to the Scriptures, that the angels proclaimed, He is not here. He is risen. Now that is the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the way. That's an Easter message. But if you may die before 2018, you're de you definitely may die before the Easter message. There is no one time for the gospel to preach of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and there's no one time to preach this message, but the message that's to be preached all the time is that Jesus saves and you need to believe on him to be saved. The gospel. 
We don't know what time will rot. Somewhere right now, somebody's getting ready to take their last breath. Somebody has already taken their last breath. And some child has been born to die. We're all living, breathing, moving, shopping, eating, talking. And when we enter to the realm of eternity, that will never stop. According to the Bible, whether heaven or hell. And in heaven, a body that will be new, without pain, without suffering, without tears. An eternal, an eternal body like unto the angels forever. And glorious. Worshipping the one that suffered and died and was buried for us. And arose again. That's the good aspect. That we will have in heaven our mouths, our eyes, our ears, all to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And on the other hand, if you choose to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible records in the Gospel of Luke a mouth and eyes and fingers that will be in torment for all eternity. You see, when you enter off into the eternal life, you've got all your facilities you've got on this life. And when you think that you're dead and that's it, I'm here to tell you that's not it, that you have been given an eternal soul. And that eternal soul of eyes and fingers and feet will go off into eternity forever. And you can be in righteousness and gladness and joy in Jesus Christ, the Savior. Or you can be in misery and in pain and in sorrow in hell without Jesus. You see, in heaven, it's all about God and His Son, Jesus Christ. In glory, it's all about righteousness and holiness. There's no pain, there's no sorrow, there's no suffering in the bold of God. And that righteousness... That habitation, that dwelling before God today is met by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If you are suffering on this earth alive right now, I'm here to tell you by the blood and by your heart Believe it in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will go to a place after this sufferings where you'll never suffer again. And you will give the praise and honor and glory to the one that suffered and died and was buried and arose again forever, seated at the right hand of the Father for glory forever. You will praise your Savior. You will be thankful of your Savior. I was reminded yesterday about ten lepers. Why did the one turn around and come back? Because he was thankful. Oh Lord God, the leprosy is gone. And leprosy in the Bible pictures sin and you are fully covered with sin. You were conceived in sin by your parents, Adam and Eve. And you are unclean. And you stand outside the gates of New Jerusalem unclean. Unclean. Except being by washed by the high priest, Jesus Christ, who entered into that veil with his blood, without spot, without sin. 
the Lamb of God which take away the sin in the world. And yet, if you choose to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will enter into a place called hell. Now, when I first got saved growing up, there were people say there's no God. Atheists. Scientists. We are in a day and an age today that Christians and churches deny the existence of a place called hell. You see, if we imagine, you know, the, imagine in our minds so it will be so. So if we imagine there's no God, and we imagine there's no hell, and there's peace and prosperity. It will blow your mind to enter a place that you don't believe in. It will blow every fuse in, the bo in your body when you stand before the God that you didn't believe in. When the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And without your faith and belief in Jesus Christ, and you enter into the gates of hell that burneth forever, you will never get over that shock. And in the medical realm, when a body has suffered such consequences, the body goes into shock. It shuts down. It needs to get back together. It needs healing. But when you wake up in the gates of hell, you'll be shocked that there'll be no remedy to come out of that. And you will have all eternity to, to put into your thoughts that you have rejected God's free gift. And you have entered into the presence without God. And that's exactly what hell is. It's a place without God. It's a place without Jesus Christ. It's exactly where you want to go. Because if you don't want Jesus Christ right now while you're living, you don't want Jesus Christ after you die. I forget, it's Luke 16, I forget the chapter number. If you look in the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus accounts of that rich man in hell, the only thing he says about the life is, when you go tell my brother, and I got five of them, not to come here, but he never himself, oh, give me a second chance. As he's tormented, being tormented, in the flames of hell for all eternity. Oh, just give me a drop of water. He didn't ask for a keg of beer. He asked us for a drop of water to cool his tongue. I'm here to tell you that in hell you'll be absent from God and absent from the Lamb. You'll be absent from Jesus Christ who you are hearing being preached to you today. Hell is without God's mercy. There is no righteousness in hell. There is no glory in hell because glory is of God. There is no love in hell for God is love. There is no light in hell for Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. There is no water in hell for Jesus said, I am the water of life. There is no truth in hell, for Jesus said, I am the truth. There is no life in hell, for Jesus said, I am the life. And if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, and die with that rejection upon your heart, you will be put off, rejected by God, into hell. And yet, if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, you were to receive God's free gift. The Bible says when you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now, I can measure a second. 
I can't measure any on anything under a second. I am incapable. But quicker than a second, when I close my eyes to death on this earth, I will open my eyes quicker than ever in quickness to be with Jesus who suffered and died for me. Forever. And at that moment for receiving Christ and dying in Christ, I will have a life of righteousness. I will have a life of glory. I will have a life of joy. Not of my merit, but of the merit and the righteousness of Jesus Christ himself. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I'm prophesying. I am telling you what your future is. I'm not charging you. And I'm not looking at a crystal ball. I ain't painting your hand red. I've opened the King James 1611 bottle to tell you with Jesus Christ you'll be saved. And without Jesus Christ your life will be hell. That's man's future. But there is one future I cannot tell you is when you will die. I don't even know when I will die. And yet what we preach, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, it was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must believe on that to be saved. Without Jesus Christ, your eternity will be hell. If you think that this life right now on earth is hell, wait till you wake up in hell. There is no air conditioning. There is no cake parties. There is no being with your friends. There is torments forever. And forever. We can say that there's two days to 2018. But in the eternal life, there are no days. There is no time being recorded ever anymore. And back in the early of my prison ministry, I would tell the men that in hell there's a clock on the wall. Illustration. And that clock on the wall, you will be released out of this hell at 10 o'clock. And you look at that clock and you are looking forward to 10 o'clock and then you realize on that clock there's no hands. And you're tormented by looking at that clock that it'll never reach the time for you to get out. As you are tormented in pain and suffering and sorrows. You may have next to you in hell a doctor, but he can't prescribe nothing for you. And without that prescription, if you have a pharmacist in hell, he can't give you pain pills. You may have your loving wife next to you in hell, but there's no love anymore, for God is love. She hates you. There's hate. In hell. Reverse the hate. You're going to a place that has nothing but hate. For God is love. And if you want love, you got to receive Jesus Christ. I don't care what the beetles or the cockroaches say. I don't care what that music plays on the radio. The Bible says otherwise. Hell is so terrible that God sent his son to suffer and die that you may not go. And not only did God send his son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in has eternal life, that he that has the son has life. 
And he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Not only is that the love of God, Contrary to what many of you think when we come out here every week, God said to those that are saved, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them about hell. Tell them about Jesus. The loving aspect of God is that he sends preachers to you. And when you stand at the great white throne judges, which I hope you don't, you will see that Jesus Christ is the love of God, and you will see that preachers and gospel tracts are the love of God. And you rejected it. There's coming an event in your life, and I don't know how many events is going to come before this one event, but that event that's coming in your life is called death. And it may have years. It may have months. It may have weeks. It may have days, hours maybe, I don't know. But whatever your living time is, if you do not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you do die, you will wake up in hell. Hell and Jesus Christ are real. And if you were or have received Christ as your Savior, and that death comes upon you, you will be absent from that body and glorifying in the Lord. There will be no other happiest time in your life when you see Jesus. That moment when you receive Jesus Christ and you see Jesus, it's it. Everything that is bad, everything that's unholy, everything that is wrong is done when you come to Jesus. And yet when you see Jesus at the great white throne, everything that is in torment will just be gone. Describe the word terror. When Jesus Christ says to you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You see, ISIS may be a terrorist group, but there's not a greater terror than Jesus telling you, get away from me. Depart from me. Now notice Jesus says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You haven't been washed of your sins. And if you're not washed of your sins, you will die in your sins, and you'll wake up in hell. And the one that suffered and died and was buried and rose again, according to the Scriptures, will pronounce you unclean, pronounce you in your iniquity, and cast you off into the lake of fire that burns forever. That same Jesus, we are preaching to you that you may come to him to know him as your Savior today, that he will not cast you into hell, but he'll bring you in the presence of his Father and the angels. That same Jesus that suffered and died for you will be the same Jesus that will cast you into hell if you reject him. That same Jesus you reject, you'll stand before one day. And you'll have to give an account. That same Jesus that will pronounce you as a sinner can wash you of your sins today, now.
Christmas is gone. It's done. But there's still one gift you haven't opened. And that gift is not found under a tree. It's found on a tree. And that gift is the gift of God, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And you won't find that gift on the shelves of a store. It's a gift you cannot buy. It's already been paid by the gift giver. God. For God so loved the world that He gave. The love of God is giving. And God has given to you His eternal Son. He is offering to you eternal life. And the free will of man is you can say no. I advise you not to. Come to God, to Jesus Christ, with your heart as a repentant sinner sorry for your sin. Knowing that there's no other way but Jesus. Cast your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Eternal life is by Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ alone. There's coming a day that you will be too late. In a place where you do not want to be. And what's worse is you have heard what you must do to not go to hell. You have heard to believe with your heart and to confess with your mouth that Jesus saves. Jesus is coming. And I don't know when It may be 10 years from now, or it may be 10 minutes. But he's coming. Death is coming for you. When death comes knocking, be saved. Be washed in the blood of the land that take away the sin of the world. When death comes unto you, let it be with the lips of Jesus Christ. Do not die with the lips of religion. God won't take that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that life is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's the same message, it's the same salvation, it's the same Jesus. Only man has changed. God, He never changes. Be washed in the Lamb. God says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Amen.